In this video, we're going to discuss the basics of getting a mortgage in Canada. All the terms you need to know, all the types of mortgages you need to understand, and how to actually go through the process so that you don't get screwed. And full disclosure here, I am a mortgage broker, but this video isn't designed to promote mortgage brokers or promote my company. This is designed to be a well-rounded video that gives you the advice and the information that you need in order to successfully get the right mortgage for you in Canada. So understand, yes, I am a mortgage broker. However, this video is all about you getting the information you need to make the most important financial decision of your life without taking any big risks or making any mistakes. But before we get into it, my name is Nolan Mathias, and if you want the best real estate and finance education in Canada, this is the place for you. So do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and hit the like button so more people like you can see this video. And if you're watching this, you're probably in the market to get a mortgage. So if you want more detailed information on how to get the best rate, how to get the best deal, how to negotiate with a broker, how to negotiate with a bank and everything else, you can go to mortgagesecrets.ca and get my book, Mortgage Secrets, completely for free. All you have to do is pay the shipping and handling. This book will save you thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's discuss Canadian mortgage basics, the ins and outs of getting a mortgage in Canada and everything you need to know and nothing that you don't. So I've put together a little educational slide here, a beginner's guide to the Canadian mortgage process, navigating your first home purchase. Now, for some of you, this may be a refresher. It may not be your first home purchase, but this is the information that's relevant today. And by the way, it is an updated version of a video that I did several years ago. So let's start by talking about what I'm gonna talk about in this video. The key points I'm going to cover is what a mortgage is, and that's pretty basic. Then I'm gonna get into key mortgage terms. Many of these are often confused, so don't skip this part. I'm gonna talk about mortgage insurance, and I'm gonna talk about the steps to get a mortgage. So let's start first by taking a look at what a mortgage is. A mortgage is a loan used to buy real estate. Now there's several types of mortgages. There are mortgage mortgages. There's also collateral mortgages, which some banks do. And there's also lines of credit. All of these things are mortgages. I'm not gonna get into the details of what a collateral mortgage is or a line of credit is. That's in a different video. But all of these things, if it is secured against real estate, it is in fact a mortgage. And the purpose of mortgages are very simple. It helps people afford homes by spreading payments out over time. Because we all know that real estate is one of those things that is very hard to save for and pay for in cash. Especially when while trying to save to buy a property, you have to pay rent to a landlord, which sees all of the money that you would be using to buy a property go to pay off that landlord's mortgage. So mortgage is one of the few things in life where it actually makes sense to take on debt because you absolutely need to have a place to live and the difference between renting and buying, especially at retirement, can be tens of thousands, if not millions of dollars on your net worth. In fact, Stats Canada has data on this that shows that the average net worth at retirement of somebody who rents is about $29,000, while the average net worth of somebody who owns is around a million dollars. So getting into the housing market at your earliest possible convenience is the thing that over time will allow you to build significant amounts of net worth very, very easily. Now, getting into how a mortgage works, obviously there are monthly payments. This includes principal and interest. And while the payment is set at the beginning of the mortgage, as you pay down the principal, you end up paying less interest because there is less owing, and therefore more of your payment starts to go towards principal than interest. And over time, as you get closer to paying your mortgage off completely, the large majority of your payments will become principal, while at the beginning of your mortgage, a large majority will typically be interest costs. Now, there are two basic types of mortgages in Canada, assuming that we disregard lines of credit, so home equity lines of credit, and they are fixed rates and variable rates. Fixed rate mortgages have an interest rate that stays the same for the term of your mortgage, whether that's one year, two years, three years, four years, or five years. Variable rates have interest rates that change over time and typically change when the Bank of Canada changes rates. Now, when it comes to variable rates, there's two types of payments. There are adjustable payments. These payments adjust as your interest rate adjusts and fixed payments. These payments stay the same throughout the term of your mortgage. Now, there are benefits to having a fixed payment mortgage, especially when interest rates are going to go down, but there are also major downsides, especially when interest rates are going to go up. So if you're going to get a variable rate mortgage, make sure you understand the difference between adjustable and fixed payments. And it is my opinion that more often than not, the adjustable payments are far superior to the fixed payments, especially in a rising interest rate environment. 
And if interest rates start to go down, you can always manually make prepayments even though your required payment is going down. Now, when it comes to mortgage terminology, there's a whole bunch of terms that you need to understand. And I'm gonna go through this in four parts. We're going to start with amortization period. The amortization period is the total amount of time that it is expected for you to take to repay your mortgage. So this is how your payments are set. The standard amortization in Canada is typically 25 years. Now, if you take a shorter amortization, so maybe 20 or 15 years, then your payments will be more. If you take a longer amortization, like a 30-year mortgage, your payments will be less. Now, there are some added costs that come along with having a 30-year mortgage, so keep that in mind when you're going through this process. And anytime you're looking at the numbers and the data to see what you qualify for, always base it off a 25-year mortgage to begin with. And by the way, if you do wanna run your own numbers and see what you qualify for and play around with different amortizations and different interest rates, you can go to the link in the description below and download my mortgage app has a whole bunch of different tools in there that allows you to play with things, see what you qualify for, and understand the costs of owning a home significantly better. Now, that being said, the amortization is the amount of time that your payments are spread over. The term, which is often confused, is the length of time on your contract. So these are typically between one and five years, although there are sometimes 10-year deals that make sense, but typically, whether you're getting a variable or a fixed rate mortgage, you're gonna have a term between one and five years, with five being the most common. Typically, shorter terms are less expensive, longer terms are more expensive, except on certain occasions, typically around when the economy is in a recession, where the yield curve is inverted and shorter term mortgages end up costing more. Now, the good rule of thumb here is always take the term with the lowest rate at the time you get the mortgage. Statistically speaking, that is what will save you the most money, is if you're always choosing the lowest rate at the time that you get the mortgage. Now, next we need to talk about principal. Principal is the amount of money that you borrow and eventually the amount of money you owe as you pay down your mortgage. So to make this very clear, principal is the amount that you owe. And there are certain ways that you can get the amount that you owe down quicker. The first is by taking a bi-weekly or a weekly payment, which essentially pays off your mortgage two to three years faster. The second is prepayment privileges, which allow you to pay off your mortgage faster without penalty. Typically, these come in the format of either lump sum prepayment privileges or the ability to increase your payments. So for example, many mortgages in Canada have 15 and 15 or 20 and 20 prepayment privileges, which means that you can pay off 15 or 20% per year without penalty, or you can increase your payment by 15 or 20% per year without penalty as well. And the more that you use your prepayment privileges, the faster you're able to pay off your mortgage. Now, word of warning here, don't take all of your cash and just apply it to your mortgage because if you ever need to get the money back out, it can be exceedingly difficult, especially if something has happened like a job loss. So always keep a little bit of cash on hand just in case. Don't put all of your money into paying off your mortgage, but definitely if you can, make sure you're making extra payments to reduce your interest costs over time. Now the next terms that are very important to understand, and these always get confused, are the terms closed and open. A lot of people think that open mortgages means variable rate mortgages, it doesn't. An open mortgage is simply this, a mortgage that has no penalty for you to pay off. A closed mortgage on the other hand, which is most mortgages in Canada, have a penalty if you close it before the end of the term. Now, in order to get a mortgage without a penalty, you usually have to pay a higher interest rate, and typically it's about 18 to 24 months as the break even. So if you're planning on paying off a mortgage in the first 18 to 24 months, then an open mortgage might make sense. But otherwise, it's almost always better to choose a closed mortgage that has a lower interest rate. Now that leads us to penalties. There are basically three types of penalties when it comes to Canadian mortgages. There's three month interest penalties, interest rate differentials, and flat fee penalties. Now, most variable and adjustable rate mortgages come with a three month interest penalty. And these are typically the cheapest types of mortgages to pay off. Now, when you start getting into fixed rate mortgages, then you can have either a three month interest penalty or an interest rate differential, whichever is greater. Now, what's an interest rate differential? Well, an interest rate differential is really simple. It's the difference between the rate you're paying and what the lender can now lend the money out for. And if the going market rate is less than the interest rate that you're paying, well, then the lender is going to incur a loss and they're going to expect you to make up for that loss based on the length of term that you have remaining. Now, these are the type of penalties that can get very, very expensive, 
especially with a big bank. So you wanna make sure you understand the different types of penalties before you take on a mortgage, especially if you know that you're not going to hold that mortgage till the end of the term. And we have what we call the 3P rule, which is product penalty price in that order. We always make sure that people are choosing their mortgage based on the product they need first, the penalty risk next, and then the interest rate. Don't make the mistake of putting the interest rate before all else, because if you find yourself in a situation where you're going to have a payout penalty, it can cost you tens of thousands of dollars. The biggest one I've ever seen is a $75,000 interest rate differential on an $800,000 mortgage. So be wary of interest rate differentials. And then last but not least, a flat fee is exactly how it sounds. It's a flat fee for getting out of the mortgage. This is more common on private mortgage and B type mortgages, but it's something to be aware of just in case because these can quite often be substantially higher than a similar mortgage with a three month interest penalty. Now, before we get into how to get a mortgage, I wanna to touch on mortgage insurance. Again, another concept that is widely misunderstood in Canada. So what does mortgage insurance do? It protects the lender if the borrower defaults. It is the borrower's responsibility to pay the insurance premium. It usually gets added to the mortgage. It's usually quite expensive, but this insurance is there to protect the lender, not the borrower. And it's required for down payments of under 20% of the value of the property. So if you're buying a $500,000 home and you're putting less than 20% down, well, then you're going to be required to have mortgage insurance. Now, the good news is, is that mortgage insurance makes the mortgage less risky for the lender. So therefore the interest rates are usually better but be aware of the fact that if you can get to that 20% number, you can save a pretty significant amount right out of the gate. And it's also important to note that mortgage insurance isn't available for refinances or on purchases over a million dollars. And between 500,000 and a million dollars, the amount of down payment required actually goes up. So make sure you talk to your broker or your bank about the down payment that's going to be required when you go to purchase a property or you can use that app I talked about to see what the minimum down payment is. Now, when it comes to types of mortgage insurance, there's two types. There's government-backed insurance, this is CMHC, and there's private mortgage insurance. Now, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether you get CMHC insurance or you get private mortgage insurance, whether it is SAGEN, Canada Guarantee, or CMHC on your commitment letter and on your mortgage documents is pretty much irrelevant but understand that there are two different types and the primary difference, which probably doesn't really matter to you, is that government backed insurance is guaranteed to 100%. Private mortgage insurance is only guaranteed to 95%. And this is more about the government's exposure than any benefit to you. Okay, so now for the fun part, let's talk about the process of getting a mortgage. And let's start by discussing where to get a mortgage. There are several places in Canada you can get a mortgage and some of them are clearly better than others. A lot of people when searching for a mortgage will go online and search lowest mortgage rate in Canada. What they will typically find is the discount mortgage websites. Now, some of these mortgages on the discount mortgage websites are great mortgages. Some of them aren't. And quite often, just like everything else in life, you get what you pay for. So when you get a cheaper mortgage, you're probably getting features stripped out, or maybe there'll be higher penalties, or maybe there'll be clauses that prevent you from being able to get out of the mortgage prior to the end of the term. So these are really important things to understand because if you don't understand them and you do end up getting a discount mortgage, it could end up costing you tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars somewhere down the road, simply because you didn't understand the differences between the different types of mortgages. Then there's obviously brokers. You can go to a mortgage broker to get a mortgage. Quite often they will have access to the same sort of discount mortgages that the discount websites provide. They will also have access to three of the five major banks in Canada, and they will have access to other non-bank lenders, which often have some of the best mortgages in Canada. These are often companies like First National and MCAP, who don't have household brand names, but as a result, because they can't skate on their reputations and their big bank brands, have to have a better product, which often comes in the form of significantly lower payout penalties. So if you're getting a fixed rate mortgage, this is definitely something to pay attention to. In addition to that, in most provinces, brokers have an obligation to act on your behalf. So to do what's in your best interest. And this is the only place that you can get a mortgage where the person that you get the mortgage from will have that obligation. Now, the next place is from the banks. Now, one of the benefits of getting a mortgage from a bank is quite often they have some flexibility in the things that they can do. So they might be able to do extended debt servicing ratios, which means if you are really close to being able to afford that $500,000 home, but not quite there, they might be able to push the limits. Now, 
one thing to keep in mind if they're pushing the limits is that they're actually qualifying you for a mortgage that in theory you can't afford. So there are certain products, there are certain reasons to go to a bank, but one thing to keep in mind is that banks, we call them B lenders because B is for bank, and quite often the mortgages that they sell come with higher penalties and the employees of the bank have no obligation to you whatsoever. In fact, it's the opposite. Their obligations are to the shareholders, which means more often than not, they have an obligation to do what's right for the bank and not for you, which means if they can convince you to pay a higher rate than what you otherwise should, they have every obligation to actually get you to pay that higher interest rate. And then last but not least is the credit unions and credit unions in Canada are an absolute crapshoot. Some of them have great mortgages, some of them have poor mortgages, and it really is hard to tell until you find out the hard way whether or not that credit union is one of the good ones or the bad ones. But one thing is for sure, credit unions typically don't have mortgages that can be transferred between provinces. So if there is the possibility that you may move from one province to another, then you wanna make sure that you don't get a mortgage at a credit union, because if you do, you will absolutely be forced to pay a payout penalty rather than being able to do what's called a port and moving your mortgage to another property in another province, which can save you tens of thousands of dollars on something like a penalty. Now, when it comes to getting your pre-approval, there are some really important things that you should know. First things first, a pre-approval is really nothing more than an estimate of how much you can borrow and sometimes it comes with a rate hold to protect you from rising interest rates. Now, the words pre-qualify and pre-approval are often used interchangeably, or depending on the institution, they can be used in completely the opposite manner than the other institution. So consider a pre-qualification and a pre-approval essentially the same thing. What is important is that when you get a pre-approval, when you get that estimate of how much you can borrow, if the lender or the broker didn't ask you for your employment documents, for your proof of down payment documents, and didn't fully underwrite the pre-approval, well then there's a good chance that you haven't actually been pre-approved properly, and that when you actually write an offer on a house that you aren't actually going to be able to get the mortgage that they may have promised you you could get. So it's important that your documents are reviewed in the pre-approval stage. This will save you a whole bunch of headaches and it will give you more certainty that you will actually get approved for the mortgage that you were pre-approved for. Now, once you get that pre-approval, that's when the house hunting starts. It's important that you only look at properties up to the maximum amount that you've been pre-qualified for. We've seen it over and over and over again where people look just five, 10, $15,000 higher, write an offer, and then find out that their dream home is not one that they're actually going to be able to buy because they purchased a property that was above the estimate of what they could borrow. Now, once you have an accepted offer on a home, you'll actually go through the full application process. So at this point, your broker, hopefully, will put everything that's needed together in a package and start sending it to lenders in order to get you approved. So at this point, it's important that you have a good broker, one that is actually telling you where they are submitting the mortgage and what you are potentially going to be getting. But if you need a great broker, then feel free to go to mortgage360.ca and get one of my team to help you. They've been trained in transparency, accountability, and honesty, and they will guide you through the process every step of the way, allowing you to make the important decisions rather than making them for you. So in order to apply, just go to mortgage360.ca. Now, once your mortgage has been submitted to the lender, if it has been submitted properly, you will get an approval back. And at this point, they will issue what's called a commitment letter. You'll review that commitment letter with your broker and then what you will do is go and find any additional documents that the lender requires. Now, when it comes to the approval process, the lenders in Canada use what's called the five C's of credit. Now, when it comes to actually getting an approval, on occasion, people will find themselves not getting approved, but not because they can't get approved for the mortgage, but because the collateral, the property that they're trying to buy, has some sort of an issue with it. And this is usually a sign that you should turn and run from that property. Because if the lender finds something wrong with the property, maybe it's overvalued, maybe it has high condo fees or bad financials if it's a condo or a strata property, then that is typically something that in your home buying process helps you make better decisions. Now, with respect to capacity, that is simply your capacity to be able to repay the loan, your character, which includes your credit, is the likelihood that you're a good person and you'll actually repay the loan. Your capital is how much money that you're both putting down and the reserves that you have available should you need them once you purchase the property. Lenders don't like to lend to people who basically put all their money into a property and can barely afford it. That's usually a red flag for them. And then last but not least, conditions are the things that the lenders will require you to do. Things like prove your income, prove your down payment source, and so on and so forth. Now, once you've got your approval and you've reviewed your commitment letter, then you will start to get into the closing process. The final steps here are to review and sign the mortgage agreement with the lawyer. So the commitment letter 
is reviewed with a mortgage broker. Once you've signed this, this tells the lender to instruct the lawyer with the actual mortgage documents. You'll sit down with them, sign the documents, and also sign any other documents associated with transferring the property. And at this point, you'll also be required to bring in any remaining down payment and any amounts owing for any additional fees, including legal fees, land transfer tax, and whatever else is applicable in your province. Now, land transfer tax isn't something that's applicable in all provinces, but wherever you're buying, make sure you Google land transfer tax in your province so that you are aware of the fact that you are going to have that fee to pay. And as far as legal fees, they typically range between $1,500 and $2,500, so be prepared for that as well. Now, last but not least, here are some tips for first-time homebuyers. When you're getting into buying a property, make sure you budget wisely. Just because you've been pre-approved for X number of dollars doesn't mean that you should be borrowing every dollar you've been pre-approved for. And you also need to consider additional home ownership costs. Things like taxes, things like heating costs, which are often more than you expect, and things like the cost to repair the property if something goes wrong. And always make sure that you seek advice, but make sure you seek advice from the right people. Because when you start telling people that you're going to go out and buy a property, everyone becomes an expert. And quite honestly, where people are most led astray is when somebody that they know tells them that X, Y, or Z is possible when it actually isn't. So make sure that you pick trustworthy professionals, by the way, the one place where you should seek advice is in getting referrals for realtors and mortgage brokers. And once you've got them, trust their advice, assuming that you feel comfortable with the advice that they're giving you. And with that, you essentially understand start to finish the mortgage process in Canada from a high level. And if you want more information on how to get a mortgage, why you shouldn't buy a property or should buy a property this year, or how to purchase a property, make sure you check out one of these videos right here.